Hey, in this video, I'd like to show you how we can create actual draggable windows in Figma while still being able to interact with elements both within the window and underneath it. Hello, my name is Adam and welcome back to the fun of iterating with Figma. Before we dive into the actual trick itself, let's make sure we all understand the underlying mechanism. So each frame we create in Figma has an overflow behavior property that we can access under the prototype tab. In short, the idea here is that when the contents of a frame go beyond its boundaries, this property lets us specify how we should be able to interact with it. If we set it to horizontal scrolling, we can easily imitate things like sliders or carousels. Vertical scrolling is what we would use for things like scrollable dropdown lists. And finally, this third option called horizontal and vertical scrolling lets us build prototypes for things like maps that we can move around. Going now into the actual trick, what we have here is a window component and a rough mockup of the content underneath. Before we drag this window into our screen, we'll need to create two additional frames inside of it. So let's start by drawing a first frame, and here we want it to match the size of our main frame. I'm also going to make sure that its coordinates are set to zero on both axes while I'm here. So we need this frame here because this is where, by going into the prototype tab, we can set up the overflow behavior property to be horizontal and vertical scrolling. Having done so, let's name it simply a window container. Now, holding down an option key and starting from the center of the screen, let's draw a second frame inside of that window container. For this one, we'll need it to be roughly twice as large. And this is because that is the frame that we are actually going to be dragging. And as we have just learned, in order to pull that off, it needs to go beyond the boundaries of the window container frame. Okay, so I'm going to center it out and name it a draggable area. And of course, <laughs> none of that would make any sense if we didn't put our window component inside. And this is a good moment to do so. Let's just make sure it sits inside of the draggable area frame and we should be good to go. So now let's open up a prototype mode to see what we've done. <laughs> and as you can see, I am able to click and hold anywhere within my window component to drag it across the screen. I can also go a little crazy and toss it around like a maniac and <laughs> oh gosh, isn't this satisfying? If you want to make sure your window always stays within the boundaries of your viewport, you can calculate the exact width and height of the draggable area frame by using this simple formula, in which A is the width or height of your main frame, and B is the width or height of your window component. Lastly, I need to mention that while having our window visible on the screen, in the prototype mode we won't be able to scroll the content underneath it. And that is because for the time of having our window on the screen, scrolling interaction is occupied by our window container frame, which completely covers our viewport. Alright, so that was it for this another bonus quick tip. As always, you can duplicate this file from Figma community and the link can be found in the description. Also, a reminder that right after this video, we are going back into our regular schedule, which I presented with the placeholder components episode, which means that the next stop is tables in Figma. <laughs> and I'm super excited about this one. I hope you're going to like it too. If you want to make sure you're not going to miss it, feel free to follow me on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. And in the meantime, take care and happy iterating. Thank you.